I am Eric Schmaltz and I live in Charlottesville. I teach at Monticello High School just down the road here. And my lesson, like a lot of the other fellows mentioned this week, is based on the idea that students often come to class thinking, what's this in it for me? What am I going to get out of this? Why do I need to study history? And so I thought a lot about what I wanted to do and I wanted to help students with their own goals. In high school, a lot of times, students are thinking about the future, uh, or not, but sometimes they're thinking, you know, what am I going to do next year? Maybe I want to get ready for college. I'm really excited to graduate so I can get a job. And so I crafted my lesson around students' goals and what they're interested in doing in the future. So my lesson is called Dreams of the Future, and I'm investigating Thomas Jefferson's youth and the example that he provides uh, as an adolescent uh, and a small child that will help students with their own goals in life. So. Uh, I thought the best way to go about this lesson would be to describe a little bit of it, but I want to use you guys as guinea pigs. I want to see how it works, and hopefully you'll find it engaging. So I'll talk a little bit, and then I'll have you guys, just for a minute or two, go through uh, each step of the lesson, and then we'll regroup at the end. So the very first thing that I would have students do is a warm-up activity. Uh, that's normally how I teach, and this is my organizer for it. The warm-up asks students to list five big goals and aspirations they have in life. All right. So, and then they need to consider how they're going to accomplish those goals. So, I want you guys right now on your own to just think about where you are. Uh, whatever goals you have, it might be for next week. It might be for ten years down the run, uh, road. It might be you know when you retire one day. Just take a couple of seconds in your own head, think about some of your own goals, and then think about how you're going to achieve them. And then at this point, what I would do, and this would obviously take a couple more minutes, I know students need time to process and write, so I'm a big believer in independent writing before a discussion rather than just asking students to share, because I'm the kind of student that wouldn't have an answer right away. But would anyone like to share any of their goals? Some, some goal they have in life. Mine's not a real big one, but I always have a long list of books that I'm excited to read, but I never get to them. So I guess it would be like building in time and making it, which is actually just me, a priority so I can read them. Okay, Okay. great. Yes. So reading more books, uh, finishing that book list. Yes, Frank. Being a successful first AP U.S. History year. Ah, okay. So that's uh, certainly a goal that you're really interested in, and it's probably going to take you some planning and thinking, how am I going to reach this goal? Anyone else? Any other goals? <laughs> so then the next step I would ask uh, students is to share if they would like their list of how they're going to accomplish the goal. And I'm very curious when I give this lesson in high school what kinds of things they come up with. I would expect to get a large variety. You know, maybe some students are really articulate, they thought this out, maybe some other students uh, would not. So you might get something like, and this is the answer I get often, work hard. Right? I, just, I just need to work hard. I need to buckle down and focus. And then at the end of the year, they say, I really didn't work as hard as I wanted to, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, that might be one thing. And we'd take, you know, their responses there. After that, we would move into the portion of the lesson on Jefferson himself. And I teach primarily world history. Uh, I have taught U.S. history before as well. I'd love to teach it again. But I'm kind of coming at this more from a world history standpoint, the Enlightenment. So it's not as essential in my class that students know everything about Jefferson, but I also want the students to get a sense for who is this man, all of his accomplishments, because as we know, and I've learned so much this week, he did a whole lot. So I want you guys now in your table groups, like I would ask the student to do on their own, to discuss and try to come up with as many accomplishments of Thomas Jefferson as you can. Go ahead. This is the quiz for the week. Let's just hear a few of them. What do you guys think? Maybe some of the more significant ones. Order of the Declaration of Okay, so that I have in my center circle um, as well. Any other ones? Father of the Day. Okay, <laughs> yes. Statutes of Religious Freedom in Virginia. Right. Any others? President. President. Vice President. Right, right. Vice President. There we go. So, uh, what I would do, because in a world history context, I would expect my students may not remember all of those things or know all of those things. Is, and this is up on the website as well, uh, to scaffold a little bit. I wrote a, a sample, a teacher sample that teachers could use. Uh, and maybe some teachers are looking at this, they don't know all these details either. So this is up here. You know, I put the decoration in the center, Lewis and Clark, 
of Louisiana Territory associated with that. President, UVA, we had governor, uh, some other things being trained as a lawyer, Monticello, Jefferson Bible, violin, some things out on edge. And like Matt said, vice president, that's not even up there. So I filled out my entire graphic organizer and there's still many other things we could put on that list. A uh, pretty extraordinary man. And so now the question I propose, this is really the lesson itself is, how did he get to do all of that, right? What is it? Was he just a genius? Was he just super wealthy so he could do everything when no one else had that opportunity to explain everything? Did he have to work hard? If he had to work hard, how did he actually work hard and be successful? And I'm going to tell the students that now we need to consider this because this can be an example for you, uh, for your own life. Yes, we're not Thomas Jefferson. We may not you know, be in the same place he was as a, a young child or an adolescent, but I think there's still things we can learn from him. And so this is going to be my hook, my buy-in. And so the next part of the lesson is a group activity for looking at documents. I got really excited about the documents, so there are a lot of them. Uh, but what I would ask you to do is consider uh, two sets of documents. And I have a organizer sheet. And so I provide a little bit more background, because again, this is a world history course. I don't expect you to know this. A lot of this information was hard to find even in some of the biggest Jefferson biography, because we are looking at its youth, and it's not as well studied or as well known. And so I used a lot of my research this week to provide some of these details. So I give uh, background information about the first stations area that students will go to and look at documents, which is Jefferson upbringing in central Virginia, mostly at Shadwell, uh, but not exclusively. And there's some more links that students can confer to. And then they need to answer these questions if they look at the documents. It's one thing I found in teaching that if you just kind of let students go with the document, they don't quite know how to handle it. And I really want to ask them deep questions. And so they need to find out the type of source, reason for creation, what details. I'm really interested in the back page here. Uh, what jumps out at you, if anything? Are there any assumptions or biases? Uh, is there any important information missing? This time in Jefferson's life, the answer should be yes. There are a lot of things that we don't know about, and I want students to understand that, that we don't always have all the answers, and that's okay too. And then what clues does it give us about his view? And then that is, again, the central question is, how does this help us understand his ability to accomplish future goals? And then at the end of each Stations area time, and I'll show you the packet sources in a second. Students will confer uh, with other members in the group. They're all consulting one source per area. There's the Central Virginia area and the Williamsburg area. So there'll be you know, two tables set up for a group of four. They'll start off in the one table, move on to the next one. And you could obviously replicate that in other tables and just have you know, eight people you know, going back and forth between the two tables. So here are the documents, and let's look at a couple of them because they're really, really cool. Uh, this one comes from Susan Kern's groundbreaking <coughs> research at Shadwell. So let's just take a look at uh, the document B, which is the inventory from Shadwell. I want you guys, hopefully it comes out okay. Can everyone see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so look at, this is an inventory, and I chose some of these uh, documents because you know, a lot of times we can find letters online. And letters are great, but some of the other things aren't always as accessible online. Students don't see them as often. But historians would use these kind of tables or records uh, as well. So I want students to understand that there are other sources. I think they're a little bit more accessible to students maybe who are struggling readers uh, or students that, you know, maybe aren't as engaged otherwise. So this is Peter Jefferson, Tom Jefferson's father's uh, inventory at Shadwell. Uh, let's just take a look, and I want you to think some of those questions. You know, what does this tell us? What's still being left out? What might this say about Thomas Jefferson's uh, youth and achieving his goals? He had access to a lot of legal books. Am I on the right track here? And yes. then it seems like a lot of religious. So what might that tell us? It was, it was going to be a backbone of his education, or it was important to his family. Okay. Maybe uh, dinner conversation. Right. And we think about a lot of his accomplishments. They involve the law one way or another. Declaration of Independence is all about law. But it's not all law. 
Basically. What are some other things? Scroll down. It's actually a two-page uh, document Religion, here. Religion, natural philosophy, culture, and literature. So we learned this week about uh, Jefferson's attempt to have a um, planetarium at the Rotunda, right? So maybe this has something to do with his interest in astronomy as a boy. That's a really interesting possibility, right? Uh, and then on the second page, maybe some other things. Uh, we have you know, some other kind of popular culture, pop culture books, right? Yeah. So these kind of uh, novels that you just buy and read on your own for fun. I mean, they had those too. So we would have this discussion. The kids would do it in the group. I would come around and kind of help them look at some of these uh, different documents. Uh, a lot of what I have uh, on this one are photographs I took from here at Monticello that, again, might not be as available, at least in this format. Uh, I know you can find them on that archaeology website we learned about the other day, but I think the visual presentation uh, might be engaging for students. And then here's from Meacham's biography. I don't have a lot of secondary sources, but there are a few. And this one really captures the essence of what might have happened when Peter Jefferson died. Uh, this in particular, that her eldest son grew to become just a, or just such an unfortunate Unflinching, resilient aristocrat is no surprise. Thomas Jefferson's bravery in the face of domestic tragedy and his determination to have his own way on his own land among his own people could owe something to the example of a mother from whom he learned so much about negotiating the storms of life. And so one thing I would hope at the end of the discussion is Thomas Jefferson didn't have it completely easy. Yes, you know, he was not poor by any means. I would think a lot of people would say, you know, he was born into at least a fair amount of wealth. But that didn't mean that he just kind of sat around and life gave him everything, you know, without having to work at all. So that's the first set of documents. The second one in Williamsburg has more letters. So this is about one of the women that he pursued as a college student. I just love it. He, he's a very emo kind of adolescent. <laughs> and the most melancholy fit that any, ever any poor soul was. Because uh, he tried to dance with her. He couldn't find the words to talk to her. So I think students might be interested in that one. And then here's from the famous uh, Malone biography, and it talks about some of his views of religion and his professors in Williamsburg. This is an account book of Jefferson, so students may choose to look at this. Uh, and I just think it's, again, really fascinating about his you know, everyday life. So play tickets, coffee house, um, and other things along those lines, concerts, and so a student could understand that. Uh, what might be one of the takeaway messages from a document like this? Think about trying to be successful in life. How might these activities help make someone successful? It don't seem like to me they would. What's the possibility? Well, it's part of the culture at the time, okay. and he's connected with the governor and all the power structure in Virginia. Right, so culture is a really big part. Well, think about. We're really busy nowadays in life. What's one thing we need to keep our heads on straight? Free time. Yeah, a little bit of downtime, leisure time. So we don't think about that a lot. But maybe Jefferson, yes, he might have worked 15 hours a day, if you believe you know, the <laughs> traditional accounts. But at the same time, he couldn't drive himself uh, crazy. He had to take breaks from time to time. And we need to do that too, right? So that's something I would hope students would get out, out of this. Is when you plan for your future, you know, don't go crazy. Remember less is more. So, you know, you've got to take care of yourself as well. And so they would have all of these, and then we would come back together. And at the end of the lesson, I want students to go back and fill out the back of the sheet. And we discuss, again, uh, why do you think he was successful? In light of all of these documents now, what have we learned about Thomas Jefferson? And my hope is that they would have more reasons than at first. I forgot to mention in the warm-up, the first handout did have a backside. So that's kind of a diagnostic, what do you think? And then on the other handout, it's the uh, more summative assessment of, okay, so hopefully we further our knowledge of his accomplishments and how he got there. And then, of course, return to the students. So now consider your own goals again. This is an independent wrap-up. What can you use from Jefferson's life and experience to help you reach your own goals? So I'm really hopeful that the students will get something out of this lesson, even if they never want to study history after they graduate high school. And that is my lesson. Thank you very much.